Don't let anyone fool you. Socializing is an absolute skill and one that you can master. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to even get into these socializing events, build up that courage, what to do once you're there, and the questions to ask yourself after it's done to reflect on the experience. My name is Betty and my channel is all about self-development and mindset, but I tell you now, I wasn't always this girl, okay? I put my 10,000 hours into socializing party, everything you can name, so I'm gonna be sharing to you all the things that I've learned in that journey and time to help you come out of your shell and better that relationship you have with everyone around you. We'll start with before you even get to the social event because I feel like you, you need to build that up inside of you sometimes because you're like, do I even want to go? Now, socializing is one of those skills that I say that are, is absolutely necessary. Like you don't need to be good at algebra, but the foundation of our entire species revolves around socialization. So it's one that like, you know, you don't have to be an expert at, but you're gonna have to get at least decent and comfortable in these types of environments. Now, the biggest shift that I made to be more open to these experiences, because when I was a preteen, I was like, I am 100% an introvert. And then I feel like, I, since I'm Brazilian, I was forced into so many social situations that by the time my teenage years are over, I'm like, okay, like I'm ready to go. <laughs> and the biggest mindset shift I did to get more comfortable in these types of situations is that instead of being like, oh my gosh, who's there? Like I'm, I'm feeling uncomfortable. I would switch it to, oh my goodness, there are so many amazing people I have yet to meet in my life. And one of them might be at this party. One of them might be at the social event. So I'm excited now. It's from like, coming from a place of like, I have no idea what to expect. And it's that same energy, but in one manner, you can take this like ball of ah, and you can look at it from a fearful mindset of, I don't know what's gonna happen and I feel out of control and shift it to, I don't know what's gonna happen. And just like I met some amazing people in my life that I never expected to, that might happen tonight. And if you're in this journey of trying to better themselves like I am, sometimes I wouldn't even think, oh, I'm about to meet like my best friend out there. I would just think, hey, I might have a conversation with someone that might spark a seed in me that I didn't even know was there. They might say one thing that might shift my perspective on a certain subject that will change the course of my life. That is very real. Maybe it's not realistic every time for you to go out and you meet like the one of your bestest friends ever, but it is very, very real realistic and often that you meet someone that just just plants a little seed that really changes things and for me I always think like the people that I run into it's always meant to be so even if I will never see the stranger again they might have said something that will alter the course of my life that one random person that you meet might be so unique in the way that they articulate themselves or carry themselves, it might ignite something in you that you didn't even know was there. Because again, everyone is so different that you have never seen that combination of a mindset, patterns, look, all together in one person. I don't know, that's exciting to me. I don't know if that's exciting to you, but like, you know, that, that gets me a little pumped. And if you don't know where to go, where to be, like go call up your extroverted friend. We all have one friend who like, we constantly have to say no to because they have back to back to back plans. So call up that friend and be like, you know what? Yes, whatever, whatever you're thinking of for this weekend, I am down to go with you. And like, that is someone that you maybe you trust or that you feel more comfortable with to test yourself, right? You're not gonna be in a completely unknown environment, but it's going to be at least something that gets you out of your comfort zone. Cause sometimes you have to say yes, not even because you want to, but really just to like, okay, I have to push myself because if I don't push myself, life will push my life will push me out of my comfort zone for me. So let me take control, take the reins here and try and do this so that when the life forces me to be in these situations, I'm a bit more prepared. Now, you might not have a friend like that, or you might be like, okay, that's a friend, like, I, I don't know if I'm comfortable doing all that. I would suggest doing something that you already like. So let's say your hobby is crafting or you love playing soccer. Whatever it is that's your hobby that you do, it's great to join a class or be in a group of people who already do that because you don't necessarily have to talk to them about anything other than the hobby and activity that you guys do. It's like a guaranteed conversation starter, you know? And sometimes, depending on what what it is, 
you guys don't even have to talk that much. You guys are just all come together to do this thing. So it takes away so much of the pressure out of you of trying to, oh, what are we gonna say? What are we gonna talk about? Like, if we play soccer, we're gonna talk about soccer, okay? If we like crocheting, we're gonna ask them, what are you like crocheting, okay? <laughs> like, you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. So it's an environment where you kind of get to let go of a lot of the nervousness that you have. And lastly, before you go to an event, already think of what is something I can do to calm myself down while I'm there. Because me, no matter how much I feel like I'm comfortable in these situations, like I will tell you, you will see me disappear for five to 10 minutes at a time and I will be at the bathroom. Like my go-to place is the bathroom. I love it. Like people can think that I am letting all of it out there, you know, but it's just my calming place. Sometimes people are like, damn belly, like what did you do at the bathroom that you stay there for so long? And for me, it's like, oh, I have a moment to myself. Like no one is there in a stall with me or no one is in the bathroom with me 100%. So I get to just unwind and release a little bit and then recharge, center myself and then come back out there feeling brand new. Maybe for you, that's a person or that's going to your car. I have left events to just go to my car to like meditate for 10 minutes and then come back. I've done that actually at work so many times. Like at, you're like, I just need a little moment and that's fine. Everyone has their thing, you know? Sometimes when I go to events with my fiance, like we will talk to people and then we'll come back to each other and it'll be like, thank you. Like, um, I just feel more comfortable with you. You know, like I, I, I can just like, calm down because socializing again it's it's a whole act and no matter how comfortable you feel with the people you're even socializing with it takes up your energy right you're giving your energy to the people you're talking with so it's good to have a way to decompress so you, that you can come back more present now you're at the event you're ready to get it started you're ready to start socializing you have mentally prepared for this you've got your little you know your comfort tools and you're ready to go now, if you're in these situations and you don't always feel comfortable, you might feel the need to be someone you're not and be super talkative when that maybe just isn't you. You're a bit more reserved, a bit more quiet. Own who you are. No one's gonna be like, hey, that person sucks because they're an introvert or hey, I hated talking to them because they were a bit more quiet. Like, no, just own it. With that, understand being nice and polite goes a long way. You can not say much, but people feel your energy. You know, if you're someone who's still bringing positivity, who still has a warm smile on their face, is someone who's inviting, that goes a long way. I don't know how many times I've gone somewhere and I've talked to my friend and I'm like, did you meet that person? Oh yeah, they are so shy, but wow, there's something about them. Like they were so nice. I would love to get to know them better. So don't feel like you have to change who you are. When you're able to confidently just own the space that you take up, and that might be a, coming from a place that's a bit more reserved, people will see that because it's still open. And following up with that, notice your body language. So again, a smile goes a long way, not having your arms crossed. Like, I don't know how many times like you see people like fidgeting in the corner or you know, like they don't want to be seen. They don't want to talk to someone. And then the people react to that. And they're like, okay, well then I'm not gonna approach that person. So then you don't, you're acting this way, people feel it, they react according to the way you're acting. And now you're like, see, people don't like me. See, it's always awkward when I go out and you don't understand that you're actually creating this dynamic and it all started from you. Show up as someone who wants to socialize and who is excited to see what the universe has to offer them for the night. So when we talk about body language, I've talked a lot about the way that we show up with our body language, but notice how other people show up as well. You could be talking to someone and they're truly engaged, looking you directly in the eye, interested in what you have to say, while other times you're out here and you're just yapping. That happens to all of us. Sometimes I'm like, give me, give me a body language cue that I'm yapping away because I don't even tell, I'm just out here blabbing. And that's when they might start looking a little uninterested, looking to the sides. So pick up on these social cues because usually body language reveals more about how we feel than the words that we actually say. And most of the times, it's automatic we don't even control it or realize that we're doing this so you will get a, a lot of information in social environments as to where someone's at be, just based on that 
Next is the more present you are, the less awkward you'll be. Have you ever had a conversation with people and like the whole time you're, you're feeling so nervous that you're kind of just like waiting for them to stop talking, but at the same time, you don't want them to stop talking because then you're gonna have to talk. Then you're like, what am I gonna say? So you're starting to prepare what you're gonna say. It's a whole mess. So when you're present, you are able to let go of those worries and put them to the back burner because you're just there. You're listening to what they have to say. And from that, once they're done talking, that ends, you are actually gonna have context to reply back because you heard what they said. And from there as well, you'll enjoy the experience a lot more because you're gonna be like, wow, that was really fun talking to so-and-so versus being like, okay, that was really awkward, but not realizing that it was just awkward. Like it wasn't awkward at all for them. It was just for you because you were in your head the entire time. And as you keep doing this, you'll find out little tricks that you like to do, whether it's breath work or fidgeting with your hands, that helps ground yourself a bit more so that you can be present in these conversations. One tip I think is great is asking open-ended questions. Not yes or no questions, because have you ever tried like engaging with someone and you ask a yes or no question and they're like, yes, and that's it. And you're like, oh, that ended quicker than I expected. Uh, I don't really know where to go from here. <laughs> so asking open-ended questions, not only does it give you some time to breathe because you don't have to worry, you get to just listen and not and play more of a passive role, but you also get to learn more about this person. Whenever someone's speaking, they're sharing with you directly or indirectly their values, what they, how they look at the world, their perception on things. So this is a great way to actually get deeper with a person instead of just having more shallow conversations. And lastly, if you're starting with baby steps, just go out to these social events as a test. So you get to just show up. If you're like, you know what, I'm gonna go out, but I can only do one hour. I don't know if I can do more than that because maybe it's easier for you to conceptualize one hour of being out versus if I say yes, I'm gonna be out the whole night and that sounds like a lot. Just be like, okay, do an Irish goodbye. See, leave without telling anybody. Especially if you're going to an event that has like 20 plus people, they won't even notice that you're gone. Show up, leave early and feel good knowing that you put yourself out there and understanding that being social is a skill. And if you keep putting yourself out there today, next week, the month after that, you are practicing this skill and eventually it's going to get more and more comfortable for you. Now the event is done, you're safe and sound in your home alone and at peace. And this is a great time for you to start reflecting and asking questions about how it went. Before we go to an event, we can feel a lot of anxiety and think all of the negative thoughts. And when we come back, we can actually a lot of times reflect on how we feel and realize, oh, that actually wasn't bad at all. Like I thought it was gonna be in, in a level of scariness, like a seven, and it was really a two. And for me personally, I love writing down things like this. It's good for you to reflect with yourself, whichever way you wanna do it, but I love writing things like this down because the next time you're presented with an opportunity to do something similar, you're gonna have those same thoughts of like anxiousness, all of that, right? But then you get to read whatever you wrote and be like, oh, actually, it wasn't that bad at all. So you know what, maybe I will take you up on that offer. Maybe I will go to that event. And I wrote it. It's not like someone else wrote it and they're trying to hype me up. I wrote it. And so I can trust me. I know that that was fun and I want to do that again. Did you meet anyone interesting? Did you have interesting conversations? Did you meet anyone that sparked a little something in you? Is there anything that you did that you felt you would like to do better next time? What about what you did right? What are you feeling very proud of tonight that you're like, okay, I went and did that. And maybe that's just going to the event, but maybe that's being there with your, you know, a bit more of an open posture and inviting people. Maybe your friend grabs someone else to chat and you stay talking to them versus like running away. You know, all of these baby steps are the prize, the absolute prize. Because again, you're just gonna keep doing these baby steps until eventually it becomes something that's more normal to you and comfortable. Having that moment of reflection with yourself is powerful because you get to see where your energy level is now. Do you feel drained or not? And if you feel drained, is it like a good fulfilled drained? You get to really analyze because that is your answer. You are going to let that guide you. Hey, I realize in these certain situations, mm -mm, not really for me, I don't like those events, but I do really well at these events. 
or usually I don't like events that have like 50 plus people or 20 plus people, but I'm really enjoying these more intimate, deeper conversations. Whatever you feel is valid and it's all indicating where you should be heading more towards or be moving away from. I think there are times where we're gonna be forced to be in every single situation under the rainbow, right? But as to the events you normally go to in your life and what you wanna do, it's good to know what you like and don't like. And here is the kicker. I want you to know what it is that you like and don't like because you genuinely do not like it or like it. Not because you are afraid. I want this to come from a, a place of trueness you know of authenticity and alignment with you not from a place of fear hey i don't like big crowds because it scares me or hey i don't like big crowds because i genuinely am not able to go deeper with people and have a real conversation and that's what i'm looking for in social environments you see the difference so get specific when you reflect and that will indicate to you how to move forward with being social because then you can go to more events that make you feel comfortable and that will give you the confidence to then go to these other events that maybe don't feel as comfortable to you, but you have to do them anyway because it might be a work event or any of these other obligations that unfortunately we all have to do. If you found any of this helpful, make sure to subscribe. I post weekly all about self-development and manifestation and I would love for you to join this journey with me because like, I don't want to be out here alone, you know, let's do it together. And I will see you next week.